gosh. It's a cool little house. <laughs> it is a cool little house. That was a long journey, huh? Well, apparently guys, I bought chicks. So <laughs> I got a call from the post office this morning saying to hurry down to the post office because it's, it's gonna be 110 today and they've got some chicks for me. So I went down, I had no idea if I had bought them or if somebody else had sent them to me. So I just rushed down, picked them up, brought them home and then <laughs> checked my email and apparently I did order them. Six months ago, I ordered them and I thought, um, I guess at the time spring was the perfect perfect time to have chicks here and didn't realize that the company wasn't shipping until August. So here we are um, with some chicks that we're gonna have to start raising and I think they'll do fine in the heat here uh, because chicks prefer a warming lamp. But yeah, that was a rough trip. I had no clue that they were coming. It looks like we have um, a group of chickens here now. I guess I got you something to watch. You gonna watch over them? Good girl. You love them. They're pretty scared of us. Yeah. Yeah. That one is the blue laced red Wyandotte. Oh yeah, it does have some blue in it. And look, cool. look at the look at the red on it. Nice. Yeah, that's gonna look really cool when it's older. Yeah. Which one do you have, Ethan? Oh, oh, that one has cool like That is such a cool like, one. Okay, so that one I think is called the Green Queen and it's going to have these really cool green eggs cuz we only have the blue, brown and white right now. Yeah. I like the eyes like as a mask on, like a robber's mask. Yeah, it does. This one is all gray. This one gray is legs. that one I think is the lavender or pinkton. Oh, so it'll be kind of purple. Mm. Yeah, it'll, it'll look kind of gray, I know. This one's kind of loud. This one is called a steel egger. Ooh. And it's just like a different, I just wanted to get a lot of different breeds. Uh -huh. So they're supposed to be all girls, right? Yes, they're all females, so Ooh. no roosters in this bunch. This one has feather legs. Oh, oh okay. yeah, this one's a fun one. This one's the buff Brahma. Okay. Ooh, uh, so not a silky, just like... Yeah, kind of similar, you know, like size and stuff, but yeah, it'll look sort of like a silky, mm. but have these cool colors on it. Like a Brahma bull. So one thing we have not been very good at is now you guys are older, we don't really name our chickens. When you yeah, guys were no. little, we did use you used to name them Flurf and all these weird Fluffy. names. <laughs> this one's name is Ruffles. This is Puffles. <laughs> So yeah. now we got a name of names. I was thinking maybe the best way is to name them the name of like closest to their breed so we remember them. Okay. That one definitely should be called Lavender, like from Harry yes. Potter. Yes. Bandit, the one with the mask. Well, the, except they're all girls. They're all girls. She's the, called a Green Queen, so it'd be funny oh, okay. to name her Queenie or something. Okay. Yeah, Edward. Queenie, Queenie. I like Queenie. Okay, what do we name the Steel Egger? Uh, Stevie. Stevie. Because like steel. Oh like yeah, SG, we should. SG. That's good. That's good. What's your idea then? <laughs> I don't know. Flurf. Flurf. Fluffy Flurf the chicken. Too. For the buff Brahma. Buffy? Buffy. <laughs> yeah. Like Buffy the Vampire sure. Slayer, you know? Yeah, totally. And then what about the blue laced red Wyandot? Bluey. <laughs> no, no, we, we should do color. Like something with what? a W, so it should be like like uh like Wilhelmina or like something. I'm trying to think of that. This is the actor from Stranger Things, the lady actor. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know you're talking about. I can't think of it. Wynona. Wynona. Oh, that's Wynona. good. Let's do that. Starts with Y W Y. What? Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Isn't it fun to name the chickens? Now, here's your quiz, Ethan. Ready? Do you remember every single breed we yeah. went over? What's this one on top? You uh, held that one, Ethan. That, that's a uh, bandit. <laughs> no, 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 that's Queenie. Queenie. Oh, oh yeah, you're Queenie. right. And I remember the all gray one here. I remember the all gray one is lavender. It's lavender. Okay. Yeah. Well, and the so red one is gonna be is the Wyandotte. So she's. Oh yeah, Winona. She's Winona. So Queenie Winona, lavender, and then. Buffy is the one with the feathered legs, right? Yeah, that's Buffy. And then the other one is. Stevie. 
the steel. Yeah, the steel. Look at, look at the kitty. The steel egger. Look at it. <laughs> oh, the kitty. They're good. Those are good names. And it'll be fun to have some different breeds. We'll quiz you tomorrow, Ethan. Have okay. them memorized. something fun. We're going to weigh both Tilly and Fern's milk and see which one is producing better. Now when you're doing milk testing, you actually weigh the milk. You don't measure it in volume. The neighbor's dog is barking at us, so it's gonna be hard to film this part, but we're gonna try it anyway. And there's Tilly and Fern, mother and daughter. Come on Tilly, go up the stand. You don't like the food today? All right, so we gotta weigh the pail all by itself so we can eliminate that. So Tilly's milk has actually gone up again. I wouldn't say it's totally back to what it was before she was feeling her morning sickness, but you know, okay. So we're gonna weigh it and see how much she gives us. Does that say one point? one to four, I think, pounds. Which translates to about three cups, I would say. No, no, kitty. Okay, bye, Tilly. Have a good day. Come on, Fern. One thing I love about Fern's structure is how long she is. She's definitely not as short as Tilly. And she's just got a lot of strength to her. She's a very sturdy doe. And now on the day that I was gonna show you that Fern has more milk, it looks like she's down a little bit. So let's weigh it and let's see if she's any better than Tilly. <laughs> oh, Tilly produced more than her. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. See, my whole plan was to show you guys how Fern produces more than Tilly and that that meant that we had bred a better goat, but <laughs> it looks like Tilly's producing more, which actually makes sense. It should be that way. Since Tilly just delivered her babies or just freshened in February and Fern here, it's almost been a whole year since she's had her babies and freshened. So uh, <laughs> I definitely think when we bred Tilly with Floki way back uh, in 2018, and then Fern was born in 2019. I definitely think we improved on Tilly's structure and milk production. It's just today is a bad day. It's not really showing it. But I'm excited because Fern has a lot more capacity than Tilly. So she has like a wider udder, a bigger udder. So I'm excited to see how her second year udder does. And now as we're nearing the end of both of their cycles, especially ferns. Now we have to decide when is the time to dry them up. So because fern is due the end of November, we should be drying her up no later than the end of this month, September. We should always give does at least two months to help build up their nutritional reserves and really keep all the nutrition to themselves and their babies. So we're gonna be drying her up soon and being done with her first year of milking, which she did pretty good. She surprised me. She stayed pretty steady throughout the whole year and that's what you want. In the beginning, goats are gonna produce more like four pounds of milk, which is probably about four to five cups of milk. And then as they start to go down throughout the year they'll produce less and less but it hopefully should be a very steady decline and not some big drop so that's uh, what we're going for and it'll be fun because next year we're gonna actually do milk testing again and we'll see how they all perform Tilly Fern and Tatum the three T's the Tilly line it'll be interesting kitty really wants that milk should we give you a little bit huh there we go. See? All right. Bye, Fern. See you later. All right, so it's time to strain the milk. 
and we use this little strainer device here and we use this little paper filter. It's actually made for filtering milk. Put this on there, there, and then we start a straining. So it looks like we've got about four cups. So I would say it's probably pretty equal since their weights were pretty equal. Probably two cups from Tilly and two cups from Fern. I think if Tilly hadn't have gotten sick this year, she probably would have kept producing better. Tilly still is a really good producer and I'm really happy with her. She also produces like the best babies, the ones I always wanna keep. So she has good lines. It's just uh, been a rough year for her, I guess. Oh, and there's always a controversy on if I should show what's in the top. Right now it just strains so fast that there's only foam. But if I dump that foam out, we've probably got a few specks of dust, maybe a hair or two. <laughs> Not much. The pizza oven project. Mm-hmm. Well, we waited until the weather was below 105 yeah to do this because it's so humid so hot outside but we're ready to do the dome guys it's dome day today. yeah this is either your most brilliant idea or your worst idea why <laughs> because if we can't get this dog glue off of it we're screwed well we definitely will because we did the plastic wrap yeah so we covered the whole thing with saran wrap so that it doesn't bond to it but kevin didn't think it would really bond to it anyway since it's like cement doesn't usually bond to plastic yeah so the whole reason we're using the dog glue is just so we didn't have to build a form like this is this is the easiest way yeah some people use an exercise ball but it's all soft and you can't push on it really hard and make it really strong. Dog glues are the perfect dimensions for an oven because the door is at the exact right height. It's supposed to be at like 63% of the height to be the perfect spot for the heat not to get out and everything's perfect. So you put a little form on top where the chimney is gonna go. Mm -hmm. But then we just, uh, once we covered it with plastic wrap, we just mixed up our cement and perlite. And the reason why we're using perlite is in our research, it is a lighter material and it also is a good insulator, yeah. correct? It's a volcanic rock, so it's all hollow air. So air is the best insulator. The heat just stays in the oven and no heat comes out of the oven. So once we mix that up, kind of got the right consistency then we just started covering it and we were both surprised at how difficult this was we thought this would be like the easy step but it was hard because you know you're trying to yeah. keep it on there <laughs> start at the bottom so it has something to build up on and we weren't really sure on the thickness we we're just trying to do what we thought was right we know we're going to add another layer on top insulation but... blanket and yeah then another layer on top of that but we needed it to be thick enough so that when we lift this up, it doesn't break. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But yeah, it's just kind of tedious work of us just making sure that it is even and that the whole thing is covered. And today, here's where we're at. So <laughs> it's it's hard, like it, it dried. Yeah, it's gonna be strong, I think. But we're going to put more layers on it, so it's going to be nice and thick. So when do you think we're going to lift this off and pull that out? We could always wait until we've done the other layers. Kevin's 100% sure that this is going to come off, and I'm like 96% sure that this is going to come off. Lift the whole thing up right now. <laughs> I just want to see how heavy it is. You sure it's gonna come off? Yep. Okay. So the plan is to lift this whole thing up and pull the dog glue out and then set it back down. Guys, I have an idea. Let's make something really comforting tonight. I have a little bit of leftover grilled chicken from this week's lunch meal prep and have a lot of good fresh broccoli. So here's what we're gonna make. We're gonna take our flour and our butter. 
we're gonna take our milk and our broth and we're gonna make a really good creamy pasta dish tonight. It's really important that tonight we keep the pasta al dente, which means a little bit chewy. We're gonna start by making a roux, which is equal parts butter and flour. And the most important part of a roux is to make sure and cook it. You want that flour to get a little bit brown. Don't mind the burnt pot, I have not scrubbed that out yet. And it's the only setback of using Dutch iron pans. They tend to get stained on the bottom, but no worries, we'll deal with that later. Once the flour's cooked, we're gonna add our broth, just a couple cups, and our milk. Again, about two, two to three cups. And now for the cheese, lots and lots and lots of cheese. And if you haven't guessed it by now, basically we're making a homemade cheese sauce. A lot of people like to add garlic and onion powder to their macaroni and cheese, but I like it simple. I like the cheese to shine in this. And once the cheese sauce is all done, we're gonna dump in that pasta. And I know what you're thinking. Danelle, you made way too much cheese sauce in comparison to the pasta, but my dears, I did not. Just stick with me for a minute, because this is about to be amazing. We're gonna add the grilled chicken and all of that beautiful broccoli that I have lightly steamed. And now we mix it together and just let it sit and soak up all of the flavors. See, what did I tell you? That cheese sauce just got all soaked up and now we have the perfect ratio. Sometimes you just gotta make something simple and comforting and this is it. So I'll put the recipe link in the description below. Sometimes I forget to do that, but I won't forget today. And there you have it. Be sure to make this one, guys. I just know you'll love it. <laughs> Hi, kitty. I literally see a bug. Just went under that pillow. It's gonna kill you. God. Okay, guys. It's a night ultrasound this time, and we're gonna see if Tilly has any babies inside of her. And Lydia is gonna worry about bugs the whole time. Bugs are <laughs> scary. And Ethan's gonna play with the kitty the whole time. She's and chasing she's a roach. She's gonna play with the roaches. Oh. Tilly, Tilly, are you pregnant? <gasps> There we go! Look at that! Tilly, you be pregnante. Pregnante. Definitely pregnant. Look at that, Tilly. So, Lydia? Tres. Tres babes. Definitely two. I see something inside there and something yeah, inside there. Yeah, right. But I don't know, do I see a separation and see, you know, another one in one of these? Oh. Mm. That is the question, isn't it? Well, she did betray Winston, I guess. We have our final doe this year oh. pregnant. Well, unless if we breed all of them, Daphne later. But yes, we have the three Tillies officially pregnant and we're good. All right. Three Tillies. Tilly's feeling much better. She's eating a lot now, aren't you? How come it's not focusing on your face? Good job, Tilly. I haven't shown our front yard orchard in a long time, so I thought I would show you guys what we have growing. Although, there's no fruit right now. It's kind of the end of the growing season for us, especially with fruit. We're not gonna really have any more until late winter, but it's beautiful right now, so I should show you guys what we have. We have these two blackberry bushes that <laughs> I keep wondering if I should move because they're gonna get massive. But in the very front, we have a Washington orange. It's called a Washington navel orange. And this big open area is our septic tank, so we can't have anything right here. Back there is our dwarf mulberry and our Pakistani mulberry. And then we have another little dwarf mulberry that we put right here. <laughs> and then a Trovita orange right here. Coming on this side of the yard, We've got a Meyer lemon and a Tangelo. I can't remember which variety. Then right here are all of our grapes. We've got a fig, an apricot, an almond, a plum, another fig, a peach, another peach, and another apricot. 
So this time of year is so pretty because we've got so many green, beautiful plants, but not a lot of fruit because we already ate all of the figs, all of the peaches and the apricots and the almonds and the mulberries this year. But it sure is beautiful and I think it's a great use of our front yard especially since we live in an urban area where we can't have a full orchard. So I figured since we couldn't put animals in the front and we couldn't put, you know, like a vegetable garden in our front yard, instead let's just do a ton of fruit trees. So each year it gets better and better and we learn how to fertilize so that they perform the best. And yeah, I'm pretty excited and pretty proud of this little plot of land that we have, especially in the front because Eventually, we're gonna have so much fruit that it's gonna be insane. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. If you wanna watch some other videos of the chicks we've hatched here on the farm, click right here.